Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cambodia Global Dialogue of Southeast Asia TV. My name is Saksapana. Uh, in fact, welcome to the inaugural uh, session of uh, Cambodia Global Dialogue. Uh, since this is the first uh, uh, show, let me just say a bit about uh, the, the show. The show is, this initiative is really about how do we tap the knowledge, the, uh, uh, all the vast experience that many international personality, uh, national personality, even local personality could bring, you know, to share to other uh, Cambodian, you know, uh, in Cambodia. And hopefully how we can learn from this vast uh, experience and translate this into reality uh, that can be, you know, uh, helpful. Uh, in terms of idea, in terms of initiative, in terms of uh, uh, suggestion, you know, uh, and hopefully somebody, you know, in watching in one day show will find that certain idea may work for them, whether it would be in the government, in the private sector, civil society, for students, uh, it's the same thing. So we hope that this show uh, and through our uh, special guest speaker that will be coming over uh, the weeks and months to come will be able to share this knowledge, their experience of so many years in the world, uh, nationally or internationally, and we hope that this show will be uh, uh, fruitful and uh, will bring reward for uh, our Cambodian uh, uh, listener and reader. Today we have a, a great pleasure and honor to have with us uh, Her Excellency uh, Margaret Adamson, the Australian Ambassador to Cambodia. Welcome, now Ambassador. Can I call you Margaret? Uh, of since course. So we're friends, so, so I, yeah, Sapana will do. Uh, well, before we, we, we start the show, let me just uh, highlight a bit about uh, you know, the, the career of uh, Madame Ambassador. Uh, she's Ambassador of Cambodia, of course, uh, for nearly four years. And uh, before you, you were posted in where, Margaret? Maybe you should say a bit something about uh, your, your, your career a bit. Well, thanks very much indeed, Sapana. But perhaps before I do commence uh, having anything to say about myself, I would simply like to congratulate you and, uh, and through you, Excellency Kao Kim Horn, for commencing this initiative that we've just been hearing about. Um, I think it's an excellent way of broadcasting ideas and uh, of getting more information um, out to the, the wider audience and knowing as I do that this particular television station has a strong emphasis on uh, the university or the educated class, uh, we will see, I'm sure, some reflection of uh, some of the ideas that are discussed in this forum, reflected also through into the, into the academic circles. So I think it's a very, very good initiative, a very timely one, and uh, I do understand also that uh, Sumdek Prime Minister has, has given the initiative also his blessing. So once again, congratulations on uh, moving forward uh, in this way. As far as myself, yes, as you say, I've been uh, based here for the last three and a half years and uh, my mission will shortly come to an end and I will return to my, uh, my home headquarters. Um, other than that, I've had uh, quite a number of overseas postings my most recent posting was uh, in Poland, and it goes back a few years, uh, of course, as well. But um, what I would like to say about that is that it, uh, it provided me with an opportunity to take a good look at developments in um, Central Europe at a time of uh, great change in Europe, and that was the expansion of the European Union. And happily, I could come back from that posting and work on uh, refreshing and uh, expanding, if you like, the Australian-EU uh, relationship. But this is not my first posting in this region. Uh, many, many years ago, at the commencement of my career, I had a posting in Hanoi. Yes. So I was very delighted to come back to this part of the world with this particular posting. Well, uh, Margaret, I, you, you, you mentioned uh, your, your posting in the post-Cold War. You know, Cambodia also, we have our own uh, sad uh, period also. And uh, uh, I must say that it's been uh, almost uh, two decades that we have the Paris Peace Accord, the peace and Cambodia reintegration into the world, into the region. Mm. And perhaps, uh, you know, uh, 
Australia, of course, is a very much an active player in uh, in the regional uh, scene as well. How do you see the the, the dialogue, the, you know, on regional international issue, you know, in in the in the current dynamic, you know, uh, time now? Uh, Mm. Well, I think that's a very interesting question as, as we move into this uh, broader discussion. I think that we are here, and I'm very privileged to have been in Cambodia in uh, what is a very dynamic phase, not only of Cambodia's own post-conflict um, recovery and, and indeed post-conflict uh, very successful development, if I may say so, um, but it's also a time when we are witnessing uh, a lot of uh, regional dynamic or dynamism in, in terms of uh, forums for discussion about uh, shared interests and about uh, the, the sorts of challenges that are emerging uh, into the um, second decade now yes, of, yes. Uh, of this century. So I think what we are seeing is uh, a very interesting um, a stimulation of, of ideas as a result of uh, all of these issues that are in play at the moment. And I think that ASEAN is itself um, taking a very active role, a very central role in responding and uh, indeed in capturing this, uh, this agenda. From Australia's point of view, uh, we are Actually, we are ASEAN's oldest dialogue partner and we have been in active engagement with uh, ASEAN for the last over 30 years now. Yes. But we are very pleased uh, to also to be part of what has become a very important regional grouping uh, which is sometimes termed the ASEAN plus six. Yes, That's yes. the membership of it, ASEAN plus six uh, mm -hmm. other countries, the ASEAN plus three of uh, South Korea, Japan, and of course, most importantly, China. Then we have India and Australia and New Zealand. So this is the ASEAN plus six going under the name of the East Asian Summit process. And what this has done is provide an extremely important uh, dialogue uh, framework or forum framework for the leaders actually to get together and, and discuss all manner of issues, be they strategic issues, be they um, strategic linkage through to such matters as climate change as yes. a further yes. strategic issue, be they issues to do with um, the, the trends of um, uh, the economy, where they, they be trends to do with uh, shared security concerns, maritime security mm. issues, yes. and of course what we are now this year witnessing is that actually the, uh, the East Asian summit process uh, will likely expand. We are hearing that the United States and, and Russia are responding favorably to an invitation which has been issued to them uh, fundamentally from, again, yes. ASEAN in the ASEAN, driving yes. seat. Yes. And we have very much welcomed this as yes. far as the, uh, the Australian uh, viewpoint is concerned. And the reason for that is that from our perspective, as, as we have been talking with our, our friends uh, in ASEAN and, and in the region uh, for some little while, that as far as we are concerned, there's definitely space for a leaders forum which is going to be capable, because of the uh, participation in such a forum, of bringing together all of the leaders to be able to discuss yes. all of the yes. strategic issues mm in the one forum. Yes. So um, from my perspective as Australia's ambassador to Cambodia, very much welcoming the discussions that I have had in the course of my posting with uh, my own Cambodian contacts. Mm. And at the same time, um, perhaps I would note that just over the weekend, we have had the opportunity, both of us, Sipana, to be participating in what was a very lively second track forum which was uh, called the so-called Conversations uh, uh, organized by Asia Link, which is a, a second track institution in Australia, to actually uh, talk through all of these sorts of issues. And uh, I think, again, what we, what we find uh, demonstrated to uh, ourselves collectively, whether we are diplomats, whether we are officials, whether we are business, civil society, uh, academics, is that genuinely there is a momentum to this sense of shared destiny yes. and that it is genuinely mm -hmm. timely mm -hmm. to come together uh, in this way. Yeah.
so you can see intensify partnership uh, on mutual regional security priority uh, that's happening right now. And I'm glad, uh, you know, in, in the context of maritime security, you know, uh, the world, the region, you know, uh, mm. uh, we have to be quite mindful because everything is related to uh, trade. And if, if there's no security in maritime, you know, we, Cambodia, as being yes. so dependent on international trade, will be indirectly affected. But Absolutely. there's also the issue on, on many other transnational crime, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, on information exchange, people trafficking, sexual exploitation, that sort of thing. So, so I'm glad to hear that such a, a partnership mm. is being intensified. You know, so, so in, in, in this context, maybe I, 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 while we're still on the regional dimension, I'm, I'm glad to uh, say that, that the ASEAN, Australia, New Zealand free trade area have, the agreement have entered into force uh, uh, early this year. Uh, and I hope Cambodia Parliament will, uh, will ratify the, 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 the treaty, uh, the agreement soon, and Cambodia could benefit from uh, this enlarged. Absolutely. Uh, uh, market access mm. and also access inward of foreign direct investment. Yes, so what's your take on the role of Australia in this uh, uh, agreement? Well, Australia together with uh, obviously um, all of our ASEAN partners and New Zealand um, had the sense that there was an opportunity here. Um, already um, Australia's trade with ASEAN and, and indeed if you combine that with New Zealand Australia trade with, with ASEAN is uh, actually absolutely enormous. It's, it's right up there with uh, the bilateral trade that we have with, for example, with China, you know, with Korea and, and uh, with Japan or indeed with the United States. It's at a very, very high level. Yes. But our sense was that in, apart from trade itself, yeah. there was also um, a deficit in terms yeah. of investment levels mm. and, and this really is a very yes. sharp, yeah. uh, you know, a huge uh, differential in terms of quantum. Yes. So our sense was that with the, um, the um, dynamism of, of this region, this of course all before the yes. impact of the global financial crisis actually yes. uh, bit, but now we are on hopefully the other side of that yes, global financial yes. crisis and what we see is a, a very rapid emergence yeah. again of growth within mm. this region. Mm. It's often said that um, this is the century for the Asia Pacific region, yeah. that the, you know, the strategic shift yeah. of uh, dynamism in terms of economic weight, in terms of uh, development overall is shifting to this region. So. Our perspective was there was much, much more that we could be doing together. Yes. And in the absence of a comprehensive okay. WTO okay. Um, outcome, yes. that it would be timely yes. to move towards developing yes. a comprehensive yes. free trade agreement along these lines to bind Australia and New Zealand on the one side and ASEAN on the other yes. to be able to uh, under the uh, banner of a comprehensive yes. free trade agreement. So yes. we are looking in trade in services, we yes. are looking in trade in goods, we are yes. looking in trade in e-commerce, yes. um, but also, as I said, having that breakthrough in the area of investment as yes. well, yes. Uh, with a very deliberate focus mm. to lift the level of, uh, mm. of investment yes. uh, both ways, of yes. course. And one of the other interesting features of this agreement, Sapana, is that it actually includes some assistance, yes. capacity building mm. assistance, so that for the younger members yes. of ASEAN, and of course Cambodia is, is one of the younger members of yes. the ASEAN yes. family, there is funding available there for some capacity building for yes. Cambodia yes. to be able to more mm. fully yeah. take advantage mm -hmm. of uh, what is there within that free trade yes. trade agreement to take advantage of. Yeah. Mm. Well, Margaret, I can help but to reminisce the day when uh, I negotiated the uh, uh, Cambodia Accession WTO. Absolutely. I, I, I have to uh, praise the, the Cambodian negotiator for on this uh, ASEAN free trade with uh, Australia and New Zealand, but as well uh, the, the, uh, the, the other negotiator who I worked so hard to get this agreement in place. But to me, WTO or regional agreement, I think ultimately the goal of the country is to derive, extract the benefit from this of agreement. Uh, and I'm glad to say that Cambodia has, is, is mature enough now in the development of its real sector. 
and you probably uh, you were there you know, three four weeks ago when it's action season like prime minister have Absolutely. launched the rice export Absolutely. policy yeah. so this is something that we 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 are positioning to take advantage mm -hmm. but you know developing a real sector takes a lot of time, a lot of effort it's, we need a lot of access to to help yes. technology knowledge and in the area of agriculture, I understand uh, Australia is quite forceful in terms of technology, in terms of uh, knowledge base, and uh, I understand you're also doing something in, in, in helping this sector and investing in this sector. For well, certainly um, it is one of the key sectors of the Australian development partnership with Cambodia, which of course does go back an, uh, quite a long way, so yes, Pana, as, yes. as, uh, as we both uh, know. And uh, we would be um, very keen to not only be in a solidarity sense alongside Cambodia as uh, the agricultural sector continues to uh, recover, but recover also as a major pillar of the yes. modern Cambodian economy. Yes. And so from the very early days of the 1980s, when Australia arrived to, to help Cambodia uh, to recover from the ravages of uh, 30 years of, uh, uh, of, of internal conflict, uh, our sense was that this was going to be a very, very important sector. So rice research, um, uh, irrigation, um, uh, restoration, and uh, broadening this now, as we are, into a new project which is called the Cambodian Agricultural Value Added Chain. Yes, yes, yes. And this is a project which is going to focus mm. initially on rice. Yes. And what delights me about the timing of this particular project, it is, of course, just immediately after the global financial crisis. Yes. What we've seen is that Cambodia's uh, overall economy came through that crisis thanks very largely to agriculture and also the financial yes, services yes, sector. Yes. And these are two sectors yes. where Australia is, is very actively engaged. Yes, yes. So this particular project yes. is absolutely linked as well mm. to Sunday Prime Minister's own personal um, focus on rice. He calls, and I'm sure um, this is uh, perhaps a common term in Cambodia for rice, uh, but he terms it the white gold. White gold, yes. And that this is going to be a very important employer. Yes. Right through from the small holder, right through to the export. So the value added um, effort right through from the, the rice seeds, yes. right through to the export of rice yes, as yes. a successful commodity. So. We see uh, this is, uh, as I said before, a wonderful story yes. in terms of a, a country taking advantage of, of its, its natural, uh, if you like, advantage of yes. uh, its, its traditions of agriculture, but taking advantage, of course, yes. of becoming more connected mm. yes. to its immediate region so that it can be um, a competitive exporter in that way. And I think Sunday Prime Minister summed up so many of the integrated levers mm. that uh, are going to be playing together yes, yes. in making all of this yes. work. And competitiveness is obviously a, a very important part of that. And all of this plays back again into yes. the free trade agreement. Michael, you mentioned a few times the word link, the word connectivity. Mm. Uh, you're right. I mean, you know, Cambodia is a small country. Uh, in relative term, we, we have Vietnam, uh, 80 million people, uh, Thailand, another 70 million, but the ASEAN and then the ASEAN plus Australia and New Zealand. But, you know, as we work hard on building productivity, uh, critical mass in the agricultural sector. As mm. you know, agriculture is not like gene. It's very heavy. It's very bulky. I, I think that, you know, the, the notion of uh, bringing down the cost for better logistic, mm. you know, better connectivity of, of our, uh, our, our truck to the port. In this case, uh, I understand that we, we Australia and uh, with the Asian Development Bank and the Royal Government Absolutely. are working to, uh, to, to get the railroad back on track Absolutely. and I mm -hmm. hope that uh, as soon as it's, it's on track that uh, this could be one of the solutions to help bring down the cost of, mm. of uh, our agricultural commodity and, and hopefully we, 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 we can compete 
you know, in that. You, you want to say something on, on this, ah, look, this initiative? Be I, uh, because it, uh, everybody mm. is excited about having a train again. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Well, I mean, I come from a long family of, uh, of train enthusiasts anyway. But I often say that it's not a backward-looking uh, yes. form of transport. It's actually potentially the transport of choice mm. for the 21st century yes. for a, a whole array of reasons. But, um, of course, um, um, environmental reasons play into this. Mm. Uh, that's one of them. And yes. increasingly we are looking to be you know, conscious of, of the environment and reducing emissions, etc. It's also much safer Mm. than uh, heavy transport on roads. Yes. It also, of course, getting heavy transport off roads means that your yeah. road maintenance bills are very much uh, less. Yes. And, and so for so many reasons, it makes very, very good sense to move heavy transported commodities yes. off the roads and onto the rail. And you know, when Australia was, um, it doesn't seem very long ago, but we were a rice exporting country ourselves. Oh yeah. We were. A couple of decades ago we had enough water and so we were growing rice and actually exporting. Mm. All of that heavy rice mm. within Australia was always transported by rail because what you can achieve mm. is a really very competitive price yes. and the delivery of that rice uh, to whatever point that's going to be. And I think in Cambodia's case, yes. one of the important outlet points yes. is going to be the container port terminal mm -hmm. down at, mm. at Sihanoukville. Yeah. So this, I think, is a very exciting yes. prospect. Yeah. And I understand that we are going to start seeing trains running mm. already All right. in October. Yeah. So I think it's, uh, it's a very exciting project and one, I believe, that really is going to make a very big difference for Cambodia's competitiveness, mm. Cambodia's connectedness, yes. and uh, obviously in, in the uh, rice export sector. Margaret, I think we uh, talk a lot about mm. what uh, in the past, what we're doing, what's happening. But to me, you mentioned the word prospect, and you're going to finish your posting. Uh, you're going to go back to uh, your next posting or in Canberra. Uh, but the Prime Minister, in his speech, one his speech mentioned about second uh, second uh, generation reform. Sure. Uh, here I look more in terms of hope. Uh, what do you see the, the, the basis? I see two things, myself anyway, and maybe correct me I'm wrong. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think, uh, you know, uh, the, the education of the next generation, those who've been uh, exposed to, uh, you know, higher education abroad, coming back to support the, the, the government reform, uh, also the development of uh, uh, democracy and everything. So, I, yeah. I see a lot of hope in that. Yes. Uh, it, it, what's your take on that? Well, I think that uh, you know Cambodia's story is a, is a story of, of remarkable recovery and development. Uh, and just in the last uh, short space of three and a half years of my posting, uh, and in the middle of that, of course, we, we had the challenge of the global financial crisis. Did we see Cambodia dissolve into instability? No, we did not. We have also seen the, uh, the launch and the, the progress uh, very strong progress of the Khmer Rouge Tribunal. Have, have mm. we seen uh, anything but a positive impact? I believe that we see Cambodia's stability uh, as something which today is very well grounded. And as the Prime Minister said in his uh, speech on Saturday morning, uh, what Cambodia is able now to do, having the, the building blocks of peace and stability, having uh, developed a capacity to, to deal with the threat of international uh, terrorism, to work against transnational crime, to develop a framework for maritime security, all of these being very, very important ongoing building blocks. Mm. And also, of course, the legal framework mm. and uh, adopting a very, very importantly this year, mm. a new law on anti-corruption. Yeah. So these are all the, the building blocks. And as the Prime Minister said, now we are focusing more into the second generation reforms. So clearly education, health, and building the national institutions and bedding down democracy, as you say, um, bedding down the opportunity for the, the population to feel confident that the rule of law is, is working the way it should. And I think education plays a very, very strong role yes. in that. And I like to link, if you like, the, the sense that we are into a phase now very active building of 
as we, we call them, those second generation reforms. And those are in some way um, uh, matching or travelling together with what is a very dynamic process of a very confident generation of young Cambodians coming through. They are connected, they are more educated, and often taking advantage of international scholarships. Sometimes they have taken, such as yourself, the opportunity to go abroad, and I'm so happy you chose an Australian university for one of your PhDs, Sapana. But Thank taking you. advantage of these opportunities and coming back to apply what they have learned to the further strengthening of the fabric of, of Cam uh, Cambodia's uh, society. And in the, in the case of Australian um, uh, engagement here, um, I've been very delighted over the course of my posting to be able to offer a doubling of the mm. numbers of scholarships. Yes, yes. So I think that uh, we are going to see a very, very strong um, Australian alumnus yes. as within yes. the, the generation of, of Cambodian uh, scholars and officials, business people, civil society. They will come back and, as I say, play their, play their role in moving the country uh, ever more confidently forward. Yes. Having said even more confidently, may I emphasise uh, my own sense of the country today is that it is already uh, a very much more confident and, uh, and, and self-confident nation yes. as a result of the successful post-conflict recovery, which obviously goes so much to Cambodia's own resilience. Yes. Well, my friend, I, unfortunately we have to uh, bring the show to a close, but uh, I want to say that, um, you know, Australia was uh, one of the major actors to help yeah, the peace process in the 80s, the 90s through, you know, uh, you know Foreign Minister, mm -hmm. former Foreign Minister, who was in the air, who appeared in our show. Yeah. Um, but I, I want to say that at the end, you know, what, what I see is that uh, we come a long way. Nearly two decades later, uh, I see the resilience of the society, uh, more the hope of the future. Of course, you know, we still have work to do, mm -hmm. but, you know, uh, we should say, you know, rebuilding, nation building, starting from scratch, two decades is nothing, is nothing. So in less than two decades, we're able to achieve that much. I think we should be happy, we should be mm. uh, uh, reconfirmed that we're on the right track. Mm. Uh, I'd like to close by saying that we made a leap, right? I wouldn't say quantum leap, but we made a good leap forward. But now how do we build the, all the element, you know, of this uh, the foundation of this leap for a, a much, you know, uh, strong, uh, stronger and higher leap. Mm. So on that note, I, I want to say thank you for contributing to Cambodia development and uh, prosperity. And uh, I wish you uh, all the best for your next posting. Yeah. Well, thank you very much indeed, Sapana. It's a great honor yes, to yeah. have been invited onto the show and I wish you every success uh, yes, with sir. it. Thank you. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are coming to the end of our program. And uh, let me just say that uh, I want to thank the Madam Ambassador for uh, gracing uh, this inaugural show with her presence and with her enthusiasm today. And I look forward to uh, see you again next week. Good night.